Looking for a small car that's fun to drive, economical to run, and surprisingly spacious inside? Well, this is the latest version of the Suzuki Ignis, and in today's review, we'll see why it could be your perfect next vehicle. The second generation Suzuki Ignis arrived on UK roads in 2017 and over the years it's been a very popular offering for the Japanese brand. It occupies a rather strange place in the market though as it's considered both a city car and a small SUV depending on who you ask. For example, Watcar recently named it its best small SUV for value, yet as you can see it's more similar in size to a Volkswagen Up than a Ford Puma. The Ignis received a facelift in 2020 that gave it more rugged, compact SUV appeal with revised exterior styling in addition to the introduction of a new hybrid powertrain. Like other Suzuki models, it's very easy to wrap your head around the Ignis lineup as there's three clearly defined trim levels and just a single engine option. So which version should you go for and is this the perfect choice if you're looking for a small car with SUV capabilities? Well let's find out but before we do just click the pop-up banner up there to head over to the OSV website and browse the latest offers we have available on the Ignis and make sure you've subscribed as well for more in-depth reviews like this one. The Ignis boasts a stylish city-oriented design with off-road flair which I'd say is much more attractive than the majority of small cars on the market. They're saying that a lot of those look exactly the same. Apologies, Kia Picanto. Some would say the front end here looks quite cute with this low clamshell bonnet design, drawing your attention towards these wide-eyed LED headlamps that come as standard with low and high beam to maximise nighttime visibility. I enjoy the black front grille with those chrome accents and the Suzuki badge prominently displayed in the center, nicely complementing the silver front bumper, amplifying the car's SUV character. Overall, I just think it's a really nice design. The side profile is chunky and muscular, accentuated by these aggressive wheel arches and prominent side mouldings. As standard, you get 15-inch steel wheels, though if you climb up the range to mid-spec SZT and top-spec SZ5 trim levels, you get 16-inch alloy wheels in this lovely black design. Electrically adjustable door mirrors come as standard and the top spec grade adds built-in indicators to these. They're being whatever body colour you've chosen as will the door handles. You also get rear privacy glass as standard with a slight green tint to the windows. And up here we've got roof rails. You get those with the top spec grade too to further convince you that this is a rugged small SUV. I love this neon blue metallic shade. That will set you back around £465. There's a few other metallic colours available and you can also go with a dual tone colour scheme for £650. That way you can have your ideal body colour and a black roof to exude more of a sporty feel. Let's talk about dimensions then. At 3,700 millimetres in length, the Ignis is only 100 millimetres longer than the Kia Picanto and Volkswagen Up. It's also about as wide as the Fiat 500, though it sits much higher than those city car equivalents at 1,605 millimetres. Ground clearance is what's most impressive though, 180 millimetres. That's more than the Fiat Panda 4x4 and only slightly lower than this car's much larger sibling, the Suzuki Vitara. Click up there, by the way, to watch our review of that very capable SUV. The Ignis flaunts a prominent rear end with curves to the body styling and these bold LED rear combination lamps creating a unique look for a vehicle this small. So we've established that the Ignis wants to look like an SUV, but does it have the boot space of an SUV? Let's take a look. Okay guys, we're looking at a 267 litre compartment here. That's more than you get with the majority of city car rivals like the Kia Picanto, VW Up and the Fiat Panda, though it's around 150 to 200 litres less than small SUV rivals like the Skoda Kamiq and the Ford Puma. Also, if you go with the all-wheel drive variant, the boot space reduces down to 204 litres, making it one of the most restrictive in the small car class. So you'll have to weigh up whether the all-wheel drive capability is worth the trade-off in practicality. 
As you can see, we've got a rather prominent loading lip to contend with here, making it slightly awkward to load heavy objects into the back, like this piece of carry-on luggage, of which we could fit two, possibly three pieces underneath the parcel shelf, translating to really only one large adult suitcase. There just really isn't enough room here. There's not much in the way of compartment niceties, no hooks to attach objects to the floor, but we do have some underfloor storage reserved for the maintenance tools, and I like to see what you're doing at night. If you want to extend the boot capacity on offer, there's two options here. The first one is you can slide the rear bench forward. This is available with higher spec grades for the Ignis. Just pull up on the rightmost lever and you're able to slide both benches forward like so, extending the boot capacity on offer there. You can also fold down the rear bench entirely in a 50-50 arrangement with this particular model, and we'll explain why that's the case a little bit later on. And that rewards you with a total of 1,100 litres to play with. As you can see though, there's a significant step in the floor. It's by no means flat, so any objects that you want to take to the tip, they're going to be at quite an awkward angle if they're long and awkwardly sized. But there should be enough space for an adult's bike if you take the wheel off. It might be a bit of a squeeze though. All right then, what is the Ignis like to drive? Is it more like a city car or a small SUV? Let's go take it for a spin. Okay guys, let's talk drivetrain. So Suzuki first introduced its 1.2 litre dual tech technology with the Swift in 2016. They then arrived with the Baleno in 2017 and then a bit later on with the Ignis. The facelifted version of the Ignis replaced this with a more efficient dual tech unit that serves to reduce CO2 emissions and maximize fuel economy. As standard, the Ignis is configurable with five speed manual transmission. That's what we have with this particular model. If you climb up the range to the SZT and the SZ5 trim levels, you can configure six-speed CVT automatic, which we, I haven't experienced personally, but I've heard it's quite sluggish at junctions. It can take a little bit of time to move off, so judge your gaps a little bit more carefully than you would normally. With SZ5, that's the top spec grade, you can also configure manual four-wheel drive, and it's one of few models that still offer that setup on the market. The dual jet unit is mated to a 12 volt mild hybrid system comprising of a tiny 10 amp hour lithium ion battery and an integrated starter motor that assists the engine at low speed such as when setting off and cruising around town to help maximize fuel economy. Energy that would otherwise be lost through slowing down, braking and decelerating is instead harvested back into that tiny battery pack. Let's talk about that all grip, all wheel drive system as it's very surprising to see this available with such a small car. This enables you to transfer additional torque to the rear wheels to enhance stability and traction control and it also enhances the Ignis's cornering ability too. Two systems are available with this setup. You've got grip control and this activates at speeds at under 18 miles an hour when driving on slippery surfaces. It applies more torque to the gripping wheels while braking any wheels that are slipping. And then you have hill descent control. This uh, will activate automatically at speeds under 15 miles an hour when you're on a sharp incline in first or second gear. And that will just ensure that you're remaining at a constant speed. So this dual jet engine delivers 81 horsepower and 207 newton meters of torque for a pretty sluggish zero to 62 time of 12.4 seconds or 12.8 seconds if you've gone with automatic. Now, this does mean you're going to have to judge those gaps very carefully at junctions and roundabouts. But on the bright side, it makes the Ignis quite a relaxing and smooth motor to drive around town at slow city speeds. Fuel economy figures depend on your variant, but Suzuki claims you can achieve up to 55.4 mpg on the combined cycle. Indeed, taking a look at the trip computer in front of me at the moment with this manual model, we're averaging 48 mpg. So it's a little bit off Suzuki's claim figure, and this will also reduce a little bit if you've gone with all wheel drive to around 50 miles per gallon. So that is a sacrifice you make for four wheel drive capability. CO2 emission output is impressively low for a vehicle of this class. So manual models output around 114 grams per kilometer, while automatic variants, that's 124 grams per kilometer. That places the Ignis in either the 27% or 29% benefit in kind tax band for 2022 to 2023, making this one of the most tantalizing company car options in Suzuki's lineup. The Ignis has soft suspension and that translates to a rather comfortable ride around town. And even when you're up to speed on the motorway, it does a surprise 
surprisingly good job for a small car at handling light undulations and even absorbing the impact of large humps and bumps in city centres. Though I will say, when you're travelling at speed on a poorly maintained B road or country road, it does struggle to maintain that stability. It can feel a little bit jolty and bouncy. And when you drive over a sharp abrasion, like a crack in the road surface or an aggressive pothole, those really do send a funk throughout the cabin. You may find yourself kind of flying all over the front space here, but thankfully, due to these prominent side bolsters, you're held in place quite nicely. So the lightest version of the Ignis, which is the facelifted entry-level model, weighs just 875 kilograms, just 15 kilograms less than the VW Up, making it one of the lightest small cars that you can buy. So how does this affect handling? Well, this featherweight makes it one of the most fun to drive small vehicles that I've had the pleasure of getting behind the wheel of. Despite the high roof line, it's surprisingly agile, giving you the confidence to tackle challenging roads and sharp corners at speed. The low weight coupled with the light steering makes the Ignis incredibly easy to maneuver into and out of tight parking gaps. Though I will say there is a lack of feedback and feel from the front wheels coming through that steering wheel, and it does struggle to self-center at town speeds. I think the most impressive aspect about the drive here for me though is the incredible amount of grip, not just provided by the all-wheel drive system but front-wheel drive too and that instills you with so much confidence to tackle any kind of terrain and road surface and it easily outclasses the majority of equivalent small cars on the market and that makes this small car feel like you're driving a much larger SUV at times. So the brake pedal can often be a bit of an issue with hybrid and electric models because it can feel a little bit unresponsive at times, but thankfully that's not the case with the Ignis. It's nice and firm, making it easy to gauge how much pressure you need to provide in order to quickly slow down. Suzuki claims efforts were made to reduce cabin noise and vibration. Indeed, we've got molded headlining and silencers under the bonnet, but unfortunately it hasn't done a great job because as you can see, it's absolutely chucking it down right now. And when I've been traveling at speeds above 40 miles an hour on an a road to get a particular take, I'm having to shout in order for the microphone to pick up my voice appropriately and drown out the other sounds. The engine at low rev sounds rather rowdy, but I quite like this. It doesn't sound coarse and it gives the Ignis a lot of character. Due to the high ground clearance, there is a lot of road noise seeping into the cabin though, even at these slower speeds. I'm just cruising along a, a country road right now, and there is a fair bit of wind noise coming from around the mirrors and windscreen, especially at motorway speeds. Though having said that, the ground clearance in combination with the good seat adjustability provides an excellent view over that short bonnet to the road ahead. The side pillars could be slim in my view. I would like a bit of cut out glass here, making it easier to see roundabouts. These are quite chunky, they do obscure your view around about a little bit. The mirrors are a decent size for a small car and the view at the back is pretty good as well for a car this size. Over the shoulder view though, not so good. You've got a chunky rear pillar there. So if you're particularly anxious or concerned about parking this vehicle, do consider getting either the SZT or the SZ5 trim level because you get a rear view camera. Safety is an interesting one for the Ignis. Versions without automatic emergency braking, which are entry level cars, are awarded three stars by Euro NCAP. But versions that have it, which are mid-spec trims upwards are awarded the maximum five stars and that outperforms the majority of small city cars on the market. Standard safety features include hill hold assist, brake assist and electronic stability control and if you climb up the range to mid-spec trims beyond you also get lane departure warning, forward collision warning and cruise control with a speed limiter. Suzuki's warranty is fairly standard. It's three years or 60,000 miles, whichever comes first. It's not as good as Hyundai's five-year unlimited mile warranty that you'll get with a car like the i10 or the Kia Picanto's class-leading seven-year warranty. Though Suzuki offers one year of AA cover that delivers 24-hour roadside assistance in the UK and Europe. When it comes to interior quality, Suzuki are usually function over style in this regard, and this is certainly the case with the Ignis. There's lots of scratchy plastics dotted around, and it's certainly not as nice as inside the new Kia Picanto or Hyundai i10. But if you're familiar with the brand's vehicles at this point, this shouldn't throw you off. And for some, including myself, this is part of the appeal.
The plastics feel nice and durable. In fact, throughout, build quality is solid. With some small cars, you think the pillars are gonna fall off at any point, but not with the Ignis. Everything is really nicely taped and glued together. Nice attractive design to the dashboard as well, that two-tone scheme, and that's accompanied by circular and square-shaped air vents and minimal use of gloss black and chrome detailing around the center console. What's likely my favorite thing about the Ignis as a whole is the incredible amount of interior space on offer. Thanks to the steep windscreen and the high roof line, the Ignis feels tall inside. And as you can see at 5'8", I'm nowhere near the top of that roof lining. So drivers who are 6'4 over should not have an issue finding a comfortable position. And this works nicely in tandem with the great amount of seat adjustability that you get. Unfortunately, it's not electronic. It's all manual using the levers to the right hand side. But if you bought the Ignis for its small SUV capabilities, you can pump yourself up really high, getting a fantastic view over that bonnet there. Or if you want a more engaging drive, you can come down, extend that legroom, and find that comfortable position for you. As you can see, the seat upholstery is pretty basic. It's just fabric, and the design of it is nothing too flashy, but the quality of the material is good. It feels nice and durable. It's comfortable as well, and it means that kids can eat their lunch in the back. You can easily swipe away those crumbs and give it a quick hoover, and it will look good as new. It's just a shame that the Ignis is not available with lumbar support, which means it's not particularly ideal for driving on long journeys. Indeed, after about an hour or so, I do start to experience some discomfort in my lower back where even some basic two-way adjustable lumbar support would have remedied that issue perfectly. So if this is something that's important to you, do look more towards larger SUV rivals which typically have this feature included as standard. While seat adjustment is good, sadly the same can't be said about the steering wheel. It manually adjusts for height up and down, but not for reach forwards and backwards. So you'll be faffing around quite a bit to find that perfect driving position. Top spec SZ5 trims get this three spoke leather steering wheel and the leather on this feels nice and grippy, adding somewhat of a premium flair to the cabin. You also get your cruise controls on the right hand side with that high spec grade. Behind the wheel, we've got a really tiny driver display to the right hand side showing you basic driving information such as your average fuel economy, how much range you've got left and how much fuel you've saved by idling at standstill. On all but entry level models which get this MP3 compatible CD player in the centre console receive a 7 inch central touchscreen display. This is an aftermarket Pioneer system and it has DAB radio, Bluetooth and wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connection enabling you to mirror your smartphone apps directly onto the display which you may want to do because unfortunately Suzuki's software with this Ignis is quite outdated, it's laggy to navigate around, it's quite slow to load and the graphics aren't particularly sharp. Also, on a particularly sunny day, it does absorb that glare, so you'll struggle to make up some of the options. Top spec SZ5 trims get the navigation system, which works as you would expect it to work, absolutely fine. So if you're somebody who's not tech mad and you just want to connect your phone up via Bluetooth, listen to an album or podcast while on the go, and map a route from A to B, then this is more than serviceable. As standard, you get manual air con, the top spec grade upgrades this to automatic air conditioning, and the climate controls are all presented in this rather nicely designed cluster here. The buttons are nice and tactile, very satisfying to press, and it's an absolute breeze adjusting the air intensity and the temperature while on the go. The audio system is nothing to shout about. It's four speakers as standard. The top spec grade adds a couple of tweeters, but high volumes, audio tracks sound a little bit tinny. The fidelity simply isn't there. But having said that, I haven't experienced a particularly high quality sound system in any small car. Below the aircon cluster, we've got a USB port for mirroring your smartphone apps onto the display, plus an aux port. Some drive mode select buttons and a 12 volt socket. Nice sizable compartment for your mobile phone, which you can also plug in to charge if you want. And a couple of cup holders. These are really small though. I think they're just about fit a Starbucks coffee cup. Below that then, we've got the five speed manual gear shift. And that's placed in quite a natural position. It's very easy to change gears while on the go. Got a decently sized compartment in between that and the manual handbrake, a good place for the keys. And then we have a larger cup holder to the rear of the center console, perfect for a bulky bottle like this one.
I'm really impressed with the size of the glove box. Look at that, guys. We've also got a compartment just above it that perfectly slots the manuals, and then there's lots of space underneath that within the glove box for any bits and bobs. You get ticket holders on the front vanity mirrors, and the door bins are a really nice size, easily swallowing my bulky bottle. So when we measure the rear space up against other small SUV alternatives, of course, the Ignis Pels in comparison, but compared to other city cars, on the market is perhaps class leading exceptionally generous in fact inside the ignis we can comfortably accommodate four adult passengers which you can't say is the case for a lot of other small cars out there so the Ignis is a five-seater with entry-level version, so you get a middle seat in the back here, and that is removed with higher spec grades to free up some space for the other two passengers. And that was the right decision because there's no way you're gonna be able to comfortably accommodate three passengers in the back here. It makes things far too squishy. With just two, you can see how much space has been created. Got lots of room to work with there. I can stretch my knees out nice and wide. Leg room is exceptional. I'm stretching out all the way, and I've still got a bit of the way to go. And headroom, though not as good as in the front due to the sloping roof line, is still great. At 5.8, I'm nowhere near that roof line. SZT and SZ fire trim levels add a sliding bench function so you can slide forwards and backwards to either extend legroom or boot space 165 millimeters. You can also slightly recline the rear bench like so to extend comfort for longer journeys. Rear passengers aren't afforded much in the way of niceties with the exception of the sizeable cup holder which the driving major steal from them. For some reason there's no pouch on the back of this seat but there is for that one, some favouritism going on there. And the door bins aren't that big, you can only fit a 250ml bottle in there. On the plus side the doors are open nice and wide, look at that about 80 degrees there and thanks to the car's relatively high roof line in comparison to other city cars, elderly passengers won't find themselves leaning and manoeuvring in as awkwardly as those smaller vehicle equivalents so they could get in quite comfortably and you could fit a kid's seat in quite easily as well and then attach them to the isofix fittings on either bench which don't have covers on them so you simply slot them in lock them in and you're good to go okay guys let's run through the pricing for the ignis there's three trim levels available what equipment do you get with each of them Entry level SZ3 trim start from just £14,000 and you get LED headlights with daytime running lights, rear privacy glass for the passenger windows and body coloured door mirrors. Mid-spec SZT trim start from £15,500 and unless you really need all-wheel drive, this is the version I recommend you get because you'll benefit from the upgraded 7-inch infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a rear view camera and that sliding rear bench. And finally, top spec SZ5 trim start from £16,500 and they're configurable with the all grip, all wheel drive system. Plus you get additional safety features like cruise control and keyless entry. If you need a hand finding your perfect trim level, then just get in touch with OSV's vehicle experts via the link below. Okay guys, should you buy, lease or finance a Suzuki Ignis? Well, there's an awful lot going for this model. The attractive, rugged design, the exceptionally efficient fuel economy thanks to that hybrid system, and the amount of space inside is just so impressive for a small car. All of these things set it apart from the competition. Plus, it's generously equipped to standard, and it's more affordable than many small SUVs on the market. So if you want a small car that drives like an SUV but doesn't have the form factor of one, well, I can't recommend a better option. Any downsides? Well, due to its SUV capabilities, it is more expensive than the Kia Picanto and VW Up. The steering could provide more engagement and feedback. The ride comfort and quality could be improved. The engine choice is quite limiting. And the infotainment system, while functional, is a bit laggy and it won't blow you away. But all in all, I still think the Ignis is a very desirable offering. If you have any questions about the Ignis, then get in touch with OSV's vehicle specialist via the number in the banner below. Alternatively, you can just click the pop-up banner up there to book a free consultation with our team at a time that best works for you. And down below in the description, we have a very special link. And if you click that, you'll head over to the website and you'll see all the hottest, latest lease deals we have available, not just the Ignis, but other Suzuki models. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up subscribe as well if you haven't already done so and there's a notification bell down there if you click that you'll get notified when we upload the next in-depth review but that's it for today thank you for watching take care 
and safe driving.